Hello and everyone and welcome back to the England Nook Project. Here we are today in quite an unusual location, it's a bit echoey in here. Um, but this is where I'm doing some work, um, mainly because it's messy work. I kind of don't, don't want to do it um, where there's a carpeted floor. Um, but as you can see here, I've been doing a bit of work. Okay, there's a little, like, little ridge. This is for the backboard. Let's get down there and have a closer look at it. I don't know if you can uh, see that, but um, as you can see, we've sort of got a ridge here um, that's smooth with this board here, smooth along here, and then this is a bit that when we cut, it was all um, like not straight. The straight side we put on the um, bottom down along this bit here. Um, it's down there because that's the viewing side. This is the back. Um, this is I'll cut these holes and you'll see in a second why. If I go and get this bit of wood from over here, then you can see that we can just slot this on like that. So it's flat and it quite rigid if I glued that on make a good like back seam for on this side so we'll put the back seam onto this side of the woods the underside for what you can see and um, I've done that further up the board as well move just further up try not get caught on so I've done it there again um, slots in that gap, glue it, and it will stand up straight. So I've got three more of these to do. One on this side, which I would say is the easier side. Now, obviously, you won't have this problem um, if you cut it straight, which I didn't. If we just move over here, I can show you what I, what I did to get around this problem. Now, what you could do is you could just get a file and just start filing it down. But um, that takes ages, and I found a much quicker way to get around this. And that's by literally cutting grooves all the way along, all the way down to the same to the way you want it to be. Cut that all the way along. Get the chisel, hitting it with a hammer, basically mushing up the MDF of the bit that you want to cut. Now that sounds um, like kind of bad because obviously you don't want to ruin the uh, board. But then you get a file and you can just file it with a few quick files off and it will be okay. It all works out really quickly, really quick to do. So, Let's quickly do that in a speeded up sort of way and I'll show you the finished product. And there you have it, all nicely done now, well, nicely, I mean, does the job for what it's designed for, to have a bit of wood slotted in it. Um, yeah, when that's glued, it'll make a nice thing to glue my backboard onto. Now, about my backboard, the reason that last, yesterday's episode, yeah, not yesterday's, oh, no, I haven't even uploaded it yet. The reason I made that video is because I didn't know what backboard to use. And I, I could have uh, made this video before that one, but I'm, I've done it that way around. Um, I'll back, I found material for a backboard. 
Um, it's just been lying around the house. Um, it's this. That's probably a bit too close for you to see. Or oh, even this is a bit too close. It's quite big. Um, <laughs> you can kind of see the reflection of my microphone. Or shadow, should I say. Um, let's get a better overview of what I've got here. Um, it's basically just cards. Okay, so this is the um, card. It's quite big, as you can see. That's a hammer. Well, I say it's a hammer. It's a very tiny hammer. Um, this is a card. I think it's picture mountain board or um, the board that you stick inside picture frames. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, but yeah, you can see this one this size is thinner, and this one this size is shorter. Um, I'm going to be using the height of this one um, for this one, so I'm going to have to cut this one down. And I'm also going to be cutting a little strip off the ends, the other end, because if we go to one of these corners, let's go in here, probably just zoom the rest away because my camera's on the tripod. You can see that um, it's frayed a bit. So obviously we don't want that showing on our layout. But um, yeah, that's that's what we're going to be using for the back. Obviously we're going to paint it blue and make some clouds in it. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. But I think I'm going to be using spray paint. Um, not 100 percent sure yet. But hopefully that way it give us a nice sort of dusty sort of cloud effect. So anyway, let's uh, crack on with putting it next to our board, see what we can do. Okay, so we've got a board laid down now, and obviously we're going to have these bits of wood there. I'm going to have one in the corner like that, have another one there, and the last one. Here, if that's in frame, I don't. I think it's just out of frame. But anyway, basically, we're gonna get our board that's got the lock on. So I think this is the one I used last time. And basically, we're just gonna have it sit here and curve it around like so. I don't know if you can see that, but that's going to be our backboard, or back scene, whatever you want to call it. Now, this board likes to flex outwards, so that's why I'm having these big bits of wood, just to hold it in place. Um, but I could get away with not having that bit behind this one, but I think I'll have it just to help secure the boards on. So I think the next plan is to uh, stick all the uprights in and see what that looks like. So the wood that I'm going to be using and cutting up is this. Um, it's a weird size, it might not be a weird size. I don't know, it's a 18 by 70 uh, bit of wood. Um, that's millimetres of obviously. Um, by that, you obviously mean the end bit, so it's 1.8 centimeters by 7 centimeters. But we're cutting that up into uh, 22 millimeter lengths. No, yes, no, four, no. Yes, 22 centimeters. There we go, 22 centimeter lengths. Um, this is so I get the most out of what I have and I end with all the bits of wood that I have um, I can have six which is lucky because I need six um, or I need five and then a bit for a court the corner so it's good, great that I've got um, six that's just as many I need and it's a I basically use up all the wood, 
which is good. So I'll get that cut and I'll come back to you and I'll probably just glue them on as well while I'm going. Um, yeah, I'm just going to glue them on. There's no need to screw them really. They're not having that much force applied to them. I might nail them in if they do tend to break. But we'll get to that hurdle when we get there. So let's cut these bits up, glue them on, and we'll get back to you when I've got all the bits glued right, on. I've cut the first two and glued them on. Um, as you see, I'm clamping them on using clamps. So that one, that the, uh, the blue one, doesn't look very straight. Now I'm looking at it, but oh well. Uh, it's just a clamp, the wood's straight, it's good enough for me. Um, I have used a bit too much glue on it. But at least it'll be strong, at least. At least it will hold its weight. I just realised something, I forgot to wipe the glue off the uh, baseboard. Um, you can kind of see a bit dripping through there. Um, but yeah, basically I just poured that pot there straight onto the wood and just plonked it on. I put a bit too much glue on, just like that. But at least it'd be strong. Now um, I've got to quickly stop cording so I can wipe the glue off before it dries, which will probably take a day to dry anyway. Um, so I'll finish cutting up the rest of the wood because this isn't going to end well. Okay, so I've put the um, board up now and it's looking quite good actually. I didn't think it would come out this good. Um, it's making quite a nice back scene. But I've bought some Sky to put on the back. Um, I might have said that before, I can't remember, it's been a few days now. Um, but basically I've just glued it and it's stuck. So it's all good, it's alright. So let's show you the little tunnel for where the trains come in. Okay, so this is the little tunnel for the trains to come through onto the board. Um, to show you how tight it is, I've got a little track here. Literally just about fits through there. Um, and it likes to derail. So, yeah, I cut that with um, a knife. Like say, just cut round. It's a nice pattern like that. Oh, it's not really a pattern; it's a curve. But um, if I got if I, I got a slightly bigger train, and it didn't fit, so I had to cut it slightly bigger. And I'm gonna keep doing that until all my trains fit through there. So let's do that, and I'll be back with you when we start putting the sky on. It's going to be so interesting. Okay, so I've got my sky out and I've pinned it to the board. But I'm only going to be able to do this in sections because I've only got so many of these clamp things here. And yeah, this is a Gage Master back scene. This is just the sky one. Uh, mainly because I don't know what I'm going to put behind there. The sky is neutral. So not having anything behind there, I can just leave it blank, just have some trees over here and then the building's going to be sort of where that pot is that we built, container and it will be a sort of put stuff along the back to hide it up a bit, make my own stuff and the sky is just the sky. So I'm probably going to do this section to about here, first glue that down then move on to this section over here, then the next bit, bit over here, with the next sheet, because these come in three foot sheets by one foot, which is slightly annoying. I thought it was nine foot long, but I guess it's not. Well, it's nine foot long, but nine foot, not nine lots of three lots of three foot. So yeah, there's a sky and. I guess I'll glue it down and come back to you when I've got this whole section glued. Shouldn't take too long. I'll show you how I'm going to join it up here. 
which should be relatively easy, it's just sticking two bits together. Okay, so I've got it glued down now, and in the process of doing this, I have made a vital mistake. On this side here, I have covered the whole thing in glue. On this side here, I've just gone around the edges. As you can see, this side here is bump, got loads of bumps in, so here's nice and smooth. Don't do that, that's bad. Um, I've just put glue around the outside, this seems to hold it really well anyway. So, I don't know why I covered it all in glue. That just looks really bad. It's got air bubbles in, it's wet, corner. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. Hopefully when it dries, it will be nice and uh, not bubbly. Um, but yeah, we're getting there, nice sky now. Um, we need to put the other section on. I think if I was going to do this again, I would redo this sheet. Um, hopefully the sheet I'm going to put on next will not have to be taken off again. And I assume if you want to take this off, just a wet sponge or something, just wipe the surface gently and you can just scrape the paper off because it literally, that's all it is, it's just paper. I'm just going to run my finger down here because it doesn't look like it's glued very well. It's, a bit, it's not very good this actually. It's a bit of board at the back, it's curved. And yeah. Okay. So I'll show you how I'm going to join the two bits together. Right, so the clouds here are the two things that um, join up. So we have to make sure the clouds line up and there isn't such a big gap there. That, that, that looks fine. So what we're going to do is put a bit of glue along all the edges, um, including this last one. But I'm not going to cut this bit short just yet. Because I might cut it and it might be too short. No, I don't want that. So I'm going to glue all the way around, stick this on. Um, I, you don't really need clamps, like I said earlier. Unless you've got corner. Clamps are good in the corner. But um, apart from that, you don't really need clamps because the glue sticks it down. It's just literally paper. So, yeah. It's on a straight surface, so I don't need the clamps. So that's good. So while the other one's drying, I can put this one on. All glued now. It does look a bit... Naff, but I don't know what else to do. I don't know how to properly lay it down. So if it looks bad, it looks bad. Um, hopefully, what else I do will take away from the fact because that is the only bit of real scenery apart from the ballast that we've got now. So yeah, and if I don't like it, I can always tear it off and start again. That's a good thing with this sort of stuff. You don't have to keep it, you can always keep changing it. If I do do that though, it's going to be a lot of effort if I finish the layout and then decide. So, at the moment I'm going to leave it how it is, because I'm happy with it at the moment. I mean, I've never done Sky before, or any back scene, so... My first back scene, I think it's pretty good going. So... I don't know what else is going to be in this video, so if it ends here, it ends here. Um, I'll do a little outro if that's, but we might do something else, we might do a bit of like planning. So, yeah, well, I'll see you in a sec. Well, I think I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, uh, to keep in up to date with the Inglenook project. And I'll see you all in the next episode, which is coming out in a month's time. Bye-bye.